All right, guys, so we are heating up those stones. As you can see, they're directly into the fire. Um, they need to be heated as much as, 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 they, as we can. Um, they're also picking up the flavors of the actual fire. Uh, again, utilized to sear the proteins. We're gonna put one directly on top of the fatty part of the uh, uh, short beef ribs, uh, giving it a nice little sear. Again, some beautiful flavor. Um, the seasoning today that we're gonna be playing with is a traditional pachamanquera sauce. Uh, we're using ají amarillo, which is a wonderful uh, pepper from, from, from the Andes, especially from Peru. It's uh, native to all of the Andes, but primarily utilized in Bolivia and Peru. One of my favorite ingredients, again, uh, what we did is we deveined, deseeded, pureed, and we're gonna be incorporating this flavors very shortly, um, showing you exactly the, the whole process of this traditional, wonderful uh, sauce, marinade, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it's, it's wonderful. So um, again, we're playing with the rabbit, we're gonna be playing with the rack of lamb, preparing the pachamanca. Again, pachamanca dates back almost 10,000 years, people. 10,000 years that people have been cooking this way. Uh, pacha means earth, manca means pot in the language of Quechua. Uh, and that's actually, Quechua is the number one indigenous language uh, known out of 32 different ethnic backgrounds. The one that follows is Aymara. Again, Aymara, Aymara people have their own culture, they have their own language. And again, the Andes is the most most intriguing place because it's it is still back in the day. Uh, like some people live like they, they did 300 years ago. Understand? So today Pachamanca is going to reflect that aspect of how they, this is still utilized to this day uh, in, in parts in regions of the Andes. So again, uh, Pachamanca is going to be a great way to, to, to show the culture, the cuisine, uh, the tradition that we have in the Andes. By the way, in a pike spot, this place is great. If you guys recognize it, throw some dead baits out there. Um, that's what we're going to do. So when these stones are in the way of achieving that temperature, we're going to go throw some lines, let him sit down, and see if we can catch a pike in the way. That will just be a plus. This is enough today. It's cooking and showing you this wonderful technique. Again, guys, subscribe to the channel. Give us a shot. Uh, we're going to be cooking. We're going to be fishing. We're going to be traveling. We're going to be eating. We're going to be drinking. Um, join us. It will be a wonderful experience for you all to see. Salud, my friends. We'll see you soon. Amarillo is just a puree. We're gonna start seasoning our pachamanquera sauce. Salt. Gonna follow that with some fresh black pepper. garlic. I'm going to try to spread that out just a little bit. We're going to put that wakatai in last when we're done emulsifying. We're going to follow this with cumin. I'm going to put a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Gonna start emulsifying, lightly drizzling in some oil. The sauce where we want it to now, Enrique, as you can see, is clearly putting in the wakatai. Gonna incorporate those flavors. So we have a fresh rabbit. We're going to just drench in this wonderful marinade, as you can see that oil is keeping everything in there. Look at that, that's wonderful. Keep this bad boy in there. We have rack of lamb. Smother this wonderful sauce. this here what we want to do here is we want to score 
the short beef rib. You want to leave that fat cap. I'm going to put that stone right over it. Okay, we're just going to make one more cut here. We're going to follow it with some salt and pepper and some granulated garlic. Really just want to get it in between the scoring so we can get this flavor penetrated to this thick cut of meat. Again, the fat is going to be key. Just we're going to place that stone right over this fat cap. It probably goes a good half an inch into the meat. All right, guys, look at this. This is beautiful. Mm. So you want to do is you want to place these right in the sides. Create a barrier all the way around it to prevent any of the dirt overlapping the pachamanca. What we're going to do is try to create a barrier against the charcoal hitting the meats directly. So traditionally it's done with wakatai, which is the ingredient or the herb that we put into the pachamanca a little bit ago. All right, so we're just gonna add, add the final touches here, season up as much, as much as we can. It's perfect right here, look at that, how beautiful. We're gonna put this rabbit right over this side here, but I actually just want to add a little bit more of the parsley. Spread this bad boy open just like that. We're gonna throw the sweet potato Enrique, if you want to start seasoning that lamb after the sweet potato, that'll be awesome, brother. We're going to put that lamb right over these potatoes. We don't want this to get too much heat, so we're going to put it towards the outside. The smell of the marinade hitting those charcoals is it's pretty outstanding. these potatoes going on here I got the short herb we're gonna put this one right over here my god right here perfect bro look at this right here and now what we're gonna do is place these stones where we want it to be so now we have the placement of feet We want that sear where we want that fat just to get crispy. You can see that sear is in full effect here. Now, you have to be quick. You have to capture this heat. The smell out of here, you people don't understand. I don't think many, many will. Perfect. Enrique, brother, let's dump as much as we can of these greens right over the, right over the meat. Keep on seasoning heavily. Guys, you are chefs. How is this smell right now? This is insane. This is perfect. A, now, a religious experience. <laughs> go directly right over. This is one of the protecting layers. Obviously, before we start burying. That's the cover. It's really good. Absolutely. Do a couple more, Enrique. If you wouldn't mind grabbing the Awayo, which is right in that cutting board. 
and just we're gonna dump all this goodiness right in there. There we go. Oh my God. We're going to grab this, Enrique, from each corner. And we're going to, to block any dirt that could go into the Pachamanca. Oh my God. Look at this, guys. Right. This is called in a while. This is, you couldn't be more traditional. Right. We, had these, double. we had these imported from directly from Bolivia. If you don't mind grabbing that shovel, Enrique, we're going to start to bury everything. So now what we want to do, guys, is try to prevent any dirt from going here until the end. That dumping right on top, and Rick. Nice and easy. This will seal all the air ex exiting the Pachamanca. Try to go as fast as you can, Enrique, if you don't mind. Just your hand. Go ahead. Good. With the hand. All right guys, so we just finished up compacting the dirt. Uh, traditionally and typically, you would never make a fire on top, but just under the circumstances that we're in, we are going to put a small fire on top just so we can get a little more heat into the Pachamanca and we can actually fish now. So we have about a, a solid two hours to uh, have all these proteins perfectly cooked. Traditionally, one of the most important things that we're missing here is the use of the fava bean. The fava bean goes directly on top. When the fava bean is completely cooked, that means that every single protein or anything you have underneath the Pachamanca will be cooked to pure perfection. Again, this is like an underground slash oven sous vide. A controlled temperature, really breaking down the ligaments in that protein, uh, tenderizing it, and again, with that hot stone, being directly on top, you're creating that sear. So it's literally an oven underneath the ground, controlled temperature to just give you pure greatness. So we're gonna check in with you guys in a little bit. We're gonna put that fire on top. We're gonna go catch some, hopefully some, uh, any fish that we can, if any, uh, due to the circumstances. The wind is hauling a little bit. Uh, anywho, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Again, down to cook people. Get to the bottom of this. Look at those nice hot coals. Okay, we're gonna incorporate this right here. We have onions, a lot of onions. Salt. Just with all this flavor. You ready? Three, yeah. two, one. All right, so it did rip a little bit right here, guys. We kind of want to roll as much as we can so we don't get anything into the meat. We have a little patch of dirt right here, guys. Oh my God. Look at that rabbit. It just fell apart right there. Oh my God. Look at the rack of land, your finger goes right through it. Guys, this is cooked to pure perfection. As you can see these uh, stones that were placed on top. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this sear on the short beef rib. Unbelievable. Rack of lamb. Mm. Potatoes. Look at Sweet that. potato. Look at that. that is sick, bud. 
short deep ribs. Another rack of lamb. It is falling apart, my God. Look at the sweet potato. These bell peppers, that char on the skin. These potatoes are fork tender. I got it right here. All right, guys. Let's move to the plating. Little Princess Bell Pepper is falling apart. That color contrast is quite beautiful. Look at the, look at the rabbit. I'm gonna place them right up top. Asian sweet potato. Look at the light butter. One of the thighs of the rabbit. And I think we have the star of the show here, which is the short rib. Here's lamb. I want to show you this. To this guys to you guys really quickly we're gonna slide these bones right out look at it it is so tender yeah you guys want to cut this potato here wow the potato tender dude oh man boys we have a feast right now we have a feast we have this other rack of lamb this one's been protected a little more like you can see the fat look at Steam. it oh my god we're gonna finish off with the salsa criolla right on top Make sure nothing comes off here. Look at this, guys. Down to cook, middle of January. Level In... 1000. <laughs> Level 1000, <laughs> Apachamanca. Again, a tradition in the andes for over ten thousand years think about it ten thousand years and we're doing it here in rhode island and it's snowing outside right now it's unbelievable again guys we're gonna feast on this actually uh let's get some uh again guys we want to thank you for for joining us in this wonderful experience we are about to call it a night i'm pretty sure we all won't forget this one anytime soon no way i mean this is uh as ancient i guess of eating here with our hands i mean the way they would have been done it a long time ago i think that's i don't know it's in, it, it intrigues me i'm pretty sure that's to you guys as well in one way or another oh, yeah. salute man enrique mm. down to cook people check it out you won't be disappointed <laughs> Short ribs, by far my favorite. Those things, I knew they were going to be my favorite. The lamb second, in my opinion. And then the rabbit. Everything delicious. I think the short ribs, though. Numero uno. The combination of the sweet potato, though. Those sweet potatoes are... Asian sweet potatoes, my God. To people that might think cooking a bunch of stuff under a bunch of dirt might be a bad way to go, it's probably one of the best ways you can do it. I think it's up there with number <laughs> one, man. Sous vide Anything you want to do, but this is it's perfect. A different level. Salud, guys. Down to cook, down to fish. Give us a follow. Subscribe to the channel. Have a great night.